Hello everyone. Julie, let me know if I'm actually being recorded this time, please. You can text. I've got my um, phone right here with me. And um, looking forward to continuing the meditation that I started. So I'm going... I'm going to read the quote again. This comes from Adela Rogers St. John's, and she wrote the guides in March of 1956. And this one says, this one says, This is what I see the Father do. This is what the see the Father do. Must we not do likewise instead of making the clumsy mistakes, the harsh mistakes we do make? In the stillness, I feel myself in the Father's house. In the Father's house, there is peace, joy, and love. It is love's house, and there is enough love. There are no problems. Love heals all. And then from the science of mind, Ernest writes, and God will supply all our needs. We are fed from the table of the universe, whose board is ever spread with blessedness and peace, whose loving kindness has never been, has never been fathomed whose grace and truth are the cornerstones of reality. So I invite you to contemplate that quote and to, um, to contemplate that quote and And put your attention on, be still and know that you are God. Be still and know that you are God. We're going to, I'm going to, um, I'm going to um, have a little time between each time that we contemplate that and then we'll come back to it at the end of our meditation time. So we start with just allowing the body to relax and drop the attention from your busy mind to your open loving heart and just contemplate those words be still and know that I am God. And then shorten it to be still and know that I am. Be still and know that I am.
and then shorten it again to simply be still and know. Be still and know. Or as my prayer partner just said, and know that I know that I know. Be still and know. Now exhale deeply and let your attention be on be still, be still. Now contemplate, be, be. I'm going to end this meditation with a chime. Please be, be aware it's going to happen. Thich Nhat Hanh says we invite the bell. We do not strike it because striking is an act of violence. So I have just invited the bell and I am so pleased that you're here this morning. My message is about being positive in the midst of chaos, in the midst of fear. And I'm going to start with an ancient teaching story that is one of my favorites. And it is about the ancient farmer, wise, wise man, who never judged good or bad. 
He just knew beingness. All the villagers thought he was so wise. And then one day, the farmer had a whole herd of wild horses come and, and come to his farm and all the villagers rushed to him and said, oh, you are so lucky, you are so lucky. And he said, I don't know if it's good luck. I don't know if it's bad luck. It's just is. And then his son went riding one day, one of the horses, and the horse bucked him off and he broke his leg. And all the villagers came and said, oh, wise one, you are so unlucky. Your son, your heir has a broken leg. And the father, wise father says, I don't know if it's good luck. I don't know if it's bad luck. It's just luck. Well, then the army was conscripting people, young men of the son's age. And because the son had a broken leg, he could not be conscripted into the army. And all the villagers came again and said, oh, you are truly blessed. And the farmer said, I don't know if it's good luck. I don't know if it's bad luck. It just is. I tell you that story because in today, today, we can be 24 seven listening to the news and we can be, we can be imagining the worst scenarios. But since our minds are our greatest asset, it is our, it's our job to go to those minds and program positivity, joy, program goodwill. I've seen so many things recently that really tell me that life is good and that people are in this together. I have a beautiful friend, Dan Martin, who's been delivering me groceries. So thank you, Dan. Um, I feel so blessed that I don't have to go into the grocery stores, that my only leaving of my house is to uh, take a walk, and then I truly do keep my social distance. I'm looking forward to this thing being completely gone, but meanwhile, pay attention to the good news. There is actually a website, Good News, and they have a podcast, the two people from two different cities doing this podcast about good news. And a couple of things that I've seen and want to share with you. One is the power of love. Love is everywhere present because the presence of God is within us, around us, and is for us. So this story takes place in Brooklyn. It's a true story. And Brooklyn is completely locked down right now. The citizens are not allowed to go out unless it is um, essential that they go. And so this young man noticed the beautiful woman in the building across from him dancing on her rooftop. And she was dancing in a way that he could see there was joy and he, he wanted to get to, to meet her and he didn't know how to do it. So he put his phone number on a drone one of the dr drones that, that we can fly, not the military ones. And he sent that drone over to her. She got his phone number and they started communicating. He really liked her. He thought this woman is what, what I envision as the wonderful, perfect woman. And so he invited her on a date. But how are they going to go on a date when when they are under lockdown. So he arranged with her roommate for them to be out on the balcony the, at the same time on their respective balconies, which were in high rises in Brooklyn. And there they are apart. They're on their phones on FaceTime and they're having dinner together, a glass of wine together. They toast each other. And it was a very successful date, he says. So then 
he really wanted to get closer to her, to actually meet her, to see her close up. So he put himself in a bubble, in an invisible bubble, but it was a real bubble. It was, you know, people, so it's been on the news, look it up. And he rolled and walked and rolled that bubble over to her apartment building. She came out and they got to meet each other. Person to person, they still didn't touch. And I say, love conquers all. When you, when you are so enamored, you're, you will do anything in order to be with that one that is the object of your affection. Well, folks, the big news, the most important thing for you to know right now is that one that you adore is a reflection of the God in you and the one that you need to be doing everything to protect is you, is you. Just the way you are, you are here to make a difference. You are here to spread love. You are here to use that creativity that is God in you and allow it to just be the most amazing thing. Yesterday, I, um, I was sent a, an article uh, published by Bloomberg and it was another bit of good news, really good news. Abbott Labs has created a testing that takes five minutes to do. It's, it, look it up, five minutes. So they are now um, creating all of, these, all of these units, which looked like they were pretty portable, so that they could manufacture them and get them out into the places where they're needed. That's... American ingenuity and and perseverance and creativity. I also read that Dyson, who is uh, UK, Dyson created in 10 days a new ventilator, which he's manufactured and he is giving away 5,000 of these ventilators. I read this morning that Silicon Valley is repairing the ventilators that are broken or need to be repaired here in California. We are all in this together. We are all in this together. So I implore you, do what you need to do for your health, for the people's health around you, for your family and friends. And then when it gets too much, you could join people. I was, I was encouraged not to do this, but here in San Clemente, they put out an alert that at 8 p.m., go outside in San Clemente, stay in your yard, and for 10 minutes from 8 to 8.10, howl. Woohoo! Howl! So that all your neighbors can hear that you are still here. And you will beat, we together, will beat this virus. We will not only survive, we will thrive. Last week I told you, and I know it was hard to hear my video, last week I told you our responsibility is go to the end in mind. Go to that place six months from now or three months from now. Go to that place where you know in your heart of hearts all is well. Go there and see the faces of your friends and family, happy and healthy and whole. See yourself doing the activities that you love to do. I see myself doing step aerobics again, getting back with my friends at the gym. I see myself being in our center, and having a real cameraman and not doing it all myself, and having music. Oh, how I'm missing the music. But what I know is that there is a will and there is a way and we will do this. Meanwhile, it came to pass. 
It didn't come to stay. It came to pass. This COVID-19 came to pass. And folks, we've been talking about oneness for forever, since the beginning of Science of Mind, that there is only one, only one power, and it is everywhere present. Right now, this is a global pandemic. That means that everyone everywhere has the same concerns, has the same, same things to do, the same instructions or orders, if you like. I know that you all and me, we don't like that word orders. We want to do it ourselves. Well, do do it yourself. But do make sure that you have been so smart, that you've been so wise, that you have not risked anything or anything. The whole world is counting on us. The globe, San Clemente, Center for Spiritual Living, Capistrano Valley, all of California is counting on us. Of being wise, being smart, being faithful. The greatest thing that we have is the awareness of the power and presence of God within us. It is the awareness that right here, right now, God is whole, complete, and perfect in each one, in me, in you, in all. So what I know is when we allow that to circulate within us, divine ideas come to us. And we might think, oh, what a great idea. I'm so clever. Oh, what a great idea. God is loving you. God is loving you and sending you great ideas that only you can act upon. No one else is getting the same great ideas as you are, or maybe they are. In that case, there are two of you, or three, or a billion. I don't know. I want to read something else to you this morning. Pardon my back. I don't like to do it on Sunday when we have a great cameraman, and I didn't like doing it today. But this one is from a 1953 Science of Mind magazine, and the title is, I shall be calm today. Wouldn't it be great if we just decided to be calm? We can. One of the things is to turn on the good news and turn off the news news. Maybe go to get the facts once a day. And then fill your mind and heart with joy, with peace. So this is about peace. The quote comes from Galatians uh, 5.22, and the quote is simply, the fruit of the Spirit is peace. And here's the, here's the quote. Blessed are those who seek to heal the wounds of the world. Indeed, I am in such agreement. Blessed are those nurses and doctors and first responders. Thank you for them, who give themselves in sacrificial and joyful service to humanity, who in themselves bring to chaotic persons the calmness and serenity only divine love provides. They shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they who, are, who bring sweetness where bitterness dwells who release the tensions anger creates, who bring understanding where jealousy lives, who offer loving hands to the fists of hate, for they shall be the makers of peace among persons. Blessed are those who offer forbearance in the face of force, who gather in unity all that is scattered and divided, who restore what ambition 
has torn down and what greed has spoiled, who patiently ask for truth when the lie is published, who stand firmly when the tornadoes of mass revolt smash upon the lives of ordinary people. These are God's sons and children, for they never forget the law of love. Whether, neither do they surrender the banner of the Prince of Peace. What a strong spirit! No less a spirit than the eternal spirit can produce in us the delineations of the peace-created person. It is in such spirit that complete identification of oneself with the Father has to be made. The complete identification of oneself with the Father has to be made. <sighs> My beautiful friends, we can do it. We can choose peace today. We can use our mental powers to imagine our immunity being strengthened and bolstered. When I was a very, before I was even a science of mind student, I learned the t a technique that I saw Marianne Williamson doing this week, and that's a technique of using the white light to protect you and imagining that white light flowing through every cell of your body, every tissue, every function, every fiber, every organ, imagine it and make it welcome. For we do, we do change circumstances. We take change effects because we know that the first cause is God. The first cause is good. I am so grateful for the technology I'm so grateful for each and every person who tuned in. I'm very anxious to see the, the um, chat because even though I have my phone with me, I'm not seeing it. I know there's chat. <sighs> I look forward to seeing you this afternoon at one o'clock on our, on our Zoom call. Everyone's invited and if you don't know, just go to the email sent last Friday from the center and scroll down past the big block that is all about what I'm doing today and get to that link and come and join us. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to close with prayer and I'm going to start the prayer with this writer's beginning. He says, I am consciously a child of God, of the same mind, heart, spirit, and purpose. The eternal image is fully in me. I am a maker of peace. The divine spirit is upon me and anoints me to act actualize peace. To those in prisons of untruth, unlovingness, and fear, and manifests healing to those who are bound by fetters of bitterness and anger. I live in the consciousness of the infinite spirit throughout this day, dispelling darkness and keeping the whole savor of life sweet. This prayer is going to include all beings. I'm going to speak it in the first person. But this, this week I've, no, I've found out that some of our beloveds have lost their jobs. And oh, I want to tell you about that in a minute. Some of our beloveds are experiencing disease, illness. Many of our beloveds are fearful, not only for themselves, but their loved ones. Many of our loved ones are such rugged individualists, they're just going to do what they do. And I include all of these people in this prayer. What I, what I realized I wanted to tell you, going back to the beginning of my message, 
of the wise farmer. When we needed to put all of our contract employees, make them empl employees con instead of contracted, I was really angry with the government. I was really angry. I was annoyed. Why would we do that? It was working fine the way it was. Well, about a week and a half ago, that's, it started to bother me that I had just gone to our employees and told them we won't be meeting at the church so we won't need you. And I called our Centers for Spiritual Living Home Office and I got some information. And I was told that either you need to lay off the people that are not there or you need to keep paying them. And you know, we've been hearing that on television all the time. Employers are being in, encouraged to keep paying their employees, to do it even if it's hard, so that everybody is um, able to have some compensation and so that the whole economy doesn't tank, I guess. I'm not sure that I even believe that that could happen, but it was bothering me. So we had an emergency board of trustees meeting and we decided that we would pay our employees. So our band is being paid, our music director is being paid, and our front of house sound person is being paid. The rest of us, Reverend Karen and I and Diane Hennessy and Claudia Nelson are being paid. And we will do that as long as we see that it's fiscally responsible to do. Of course, the stimulus package means that possibly we could get some of that money back. But I'm telling you, if you can give some of your financial money, your, your money, your finances, we would feel so blessed. I will pray about that in a bit, but right now I'm praying for peace, for wholeness, for creativity and aliveness and love and laughter for each one. I'm praying it in the first person because that is the point of power and I am is God's real name. So here's what I know for certain. I know that there's only one power, one presence, one life, and that life is infinite and divine. It is vital, whole, complete, and perfect in absolutely every way. It is the I am that I am. It is the creative process within me. It is that thing that is supplying me with ideas that is forever moving me in the, in the direction of my highest good. So I give thanks for the creativity I give thanks for the strength that I have each and every day, for the health that is bubbling up within me as perfect health, vitality and energy and aliveness and youthfulness. I am that I am. Wholeness is natural to the presence and the presence is what I am. Wholeness is natural to each and every one of us. I accept it right now. I accept for myself an abundance of prosperity of every good kind, that there is more than enough. I live in an abundant universe. There's more than enough for compensation. There's a more than enough for living life. I realize this as I take a breath. Without breath, I would not live. So, at least in this body, I would still live because I'm, I'm an eternal being, but I'm so grateful for the abundance of oxygen and for the perfect, perfect synchronous and, uh, and lovely design that as I breathe out, the plants and trees breathe in my carbon dioxide and they breathe out to me oxygen, that life-giving force. What a great design. I'm so grateful. So 
I accept abundance of health, of wealth, of, of creativity. I accept, I accept love that the virtual, the virtual presence, the virtual meetings, I still can love. I love in a greater way. I love in my prayers. I love each and every person that's in my life or has been in my life. All were teachers and all are teachers. I'm so grateful for each one of them. I'm grateful for love itself, for I know that when I love, God is loving by means of me. Love is my expression of wholeness. I live and move and have my being in an ocean of love, in an ocean of brilliance, in an ocean of light, in an ocean of truth. I am one with all that is. And so I declare right here, right now, that fear has gone, has vanished from my experience. It's a no thing. False evidence appearing real is not true for me. It is, it, it is a no thing. It is a shadow. And I turn the light of truth on any fear. And I see it for what it was, a simple, a simple shadow, a mistake, a false belief appearing real. I accept for anyone, any of my friends, family, or anyone who is in emotional, spiritual, financial need, I accept for each one solution. I accept for each one health and strength and support. I accept for each one the love that God is. So with my heart overflowing with gratitude, overflowing with gratitude because God is, I am. I simply release this word to the action of law and if you are in agreement with me, please say with me, and so it is. Ah, I heard that echoing down the corridors of my mind. Now I'd like to remind everyone that we need to be in circulation. We need to be circulating, not, not disobeying the, the orders, but circulating our love, circulating our money, circulating our good, circulating our kindness. So this is the time I'm inviting you to reach out to someone that if, they, if that person comes to mind, call them or FaceTime them or reach out to them. This is the time for us to give back. So I invite you to include the Center for Spiritual Living in your giving. I'm so grateful for many of you did that last week and so write a check, send it to the center, or go to our Facebook page and there's a donate button. Click on that button and you'll be led to put in your credit card information. However you do it is right for you and right for us. And if this is a time when you are feeling that you don't have enough, give something else. Give something else. In the name of the center, give something else. Blessing the center for what you know about yourself to be true. <sighs> so let's just bless that givingness. Knowing that our offering is a gift. It symbolizes our faith in God. And we give with love and we love to give, and so it is. I'm going to close today's service with the peace song. I'm not going to sing it, but I'm going to speak a few lines and I invite you right where you are. If you're with a loved one and you, and you can touch each other, hold that loved one's hand or hold them in your arms or 
hold your arms around yourself. And let's say, sing and say together, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be with God as creator, family are we. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. See you this afternoon at one. Bye.